I got you. Gary Slider with Rollmart Industries. You are the marketing manager. And IT manager. And IT manager. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you do day to day. Day to day. Well, primarily my job here is to uh, handle the marketing of Rollmart Industries. Uh, in conjunction with that, I handle all the IT. And they kind of go hand in hand sometimes. Uh, I'm, like I said, in charge of the, uh, the marketing, which uh, tails everything from a brochure to uh, anything on the web, uh, magazines. Getting the word out. Lists, there. getting the word out there, anything it takes. Uh, it falls under my realm. Is your office always this perfectly organized and neat? Uh, <laughs> not usually, actually. Is this a prerequisite? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I should have been in here earlier. I, I cleaned up a little bit. Tell me about Romar. I bet most of our students have never heard of this company. And most people never hear of Romar Industries. Mm -hmm. um, like many small businesses, we sell to a very specific market, which is the city and county and state uh, department of transportation market. Uh, Harvey homeowner wouldn't hear about us. Uh, you won't see us on TV. Well, we're not going after a general public. Mm -hmm. Primarily our customers involve uh, public works directors, street superintendents, equipment managers or equipment superintendents at the city, county, or state level. It's very, very specific industry, yeah. very specific set of customers, and a very specific way probably reaching them. Mm -hmm. And we, we do is we actually market industrial chemicals, usually used for protection of equipment from rust and corrosion damage. That's the core. Okay. Um, so how do you market? To a specific industry like this? Well, we do three things mainly. We, we join the appropriate associations. Uh, we're looking for a, one, a little credibility that draws a little bit of credibility, number one. Number two, we like to support who we're dealing with, number two. And, and number three, uh, those people who are involved in the associations usually are very active mm -hmm. in, in wanting to improve their, themselves, their careers, their, their cities and counties. And so we usually market through there. Uh, we also do direct mail. Uh, and we do that usually by guarding our own lists. And uh, number three, we usually do trade shows, uh, magazines, direct mail, those kind of things. And I, th <coughs> I think, in my experience too, that's, been, that's pretty typical mm -hmm. in a specific industry. Trade organizations, trade shows, mailings, uh, advertising in the trade publications. Yep. Radio, TV, billboards, they just, that doesn't cut it. No, our audience is too spread out. If you, here in southwest Missouri, you know, city of Springfield, city of Nixa, and, and the city of Ozark, for example, Stratford, Willard, that's five different people that we actually are trying to reach. And figure maybe there may be three people each city, mm -hmm. 15 people. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't put a billboard up for 15 people. How does marketing tie into your sales? Right now, we use marketing to drive sales here at Romar. What we do is we'll uh, send out direct mail pieces, put an ad to a magazine, uh, do an email blast of some sort to try to make the phones ring and allow the sales staff to then take the ball from that level on. So you lead them to the door, <clears throat> and then the sales staff will finally close the deal, hopefully. Close the deal. It's always nice when someone said they called up and wanted to order, but that doesn't happen every time. So do you guys track your response rate on your marketing, like uh, mailings and advertisements and so forth? Most definitely. One of the things you have to do is you have to know where your money is. In most cases, you're not going to have an unlimited budget. You're not going to have fun glamorizing a, a fancy iPhone or, or some fancy widget. You're going to be like myself. I have an industrial chemical I have to glamorize. And at that level, you, you have to you have this limited budget, and so you have to know what works and what doesn't work. You really have to have to track it. It's not all Madison Avenue, is it? No, it's not all Madison Avenue. <laughs> no, not at all. Not always sexy. <laughs> not always sexy, no. It's, uh, it's going to be kind of dirty. I know how to work the warehouse, send an invoice, make a sale. I can do a little bit of everything. Now, that's a good question. We were talking about lunch. As a marketing manager in a small company in a specific industry, you end up wearing a lot of hats. You bet. Most people aren't going to work for a, 
a, a marketing agency with 50 or 100 or 1,000 people. You're going to work in a small business uh, selling a, a product, a widget. And within that, you know, a lot of times in a small business, the computer breaks. That's how I, I had a little affinity for computers. That's how I got in the IT side of things, the computer breaks. The warehouse man is sick. Well, who, who knows how to run a forklift? Well, I ran one when I was younger. Yeah, I could probably do that today. So, you know, you, you learn different jobs, keep the business going. Um, how did, so you lead right into a great question. You got into IT because you had an affinity for computers. How did you get into marketing? Well, like I said, I mostly worked my whole life in small businesses, some as little as 3, 10, 15, 20. We have about 20 right here. And in small businesses, you have no choice but to wear multiple hats. There's just not a dedicated person who does HR. There's not a dedicated person who does accounting all the time. Sometimes you do the accounting and you do brochure development or marketing or mm -hmm. whatever it is you do. So. I got into the marketing uh, with, through a couple of friends of mine. I was in sales a lot, and they allowed me to participate in some of the uh, creative stuff, and I realized I really kind of liked that. Gotcha. Yeah. So you measure your responses based off your promotions. Mm -hmm. How do you determine if a promotion was successful or not? Well, usually we try to break even, which is the cost of the mailing, the cost of the, the materials to do the mailing, uh, the labor involved in that. Uh, and then we like to, if they were giving away anything free, which we have to cover, the, we cover that cost. And that's what we try to do. We try to break even. If, if I'm happy if marketing could cover all its costs. Gotcha. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's, it works really well. Uh, but a lot of times you come back at the end of the day and the phone didn't ring and no one got any sales and that's not a good thing. Those are the conversations you don't want to have. <laughs> um. Are there certain things you've found in your experience that do make a promotion more effective than others? Uh, well, a few, a few things off the top of my head. Uh, you have to have good copy. Being a good writer is always beneficial. Okay. You know, you want to write well. Uh, you, you have to know who you're going to. That, that's the big ticket. If you want to be successful, you, you can't try to say things or do things that they don't understand. You may understand it, you know, and for us, we have industrial chemicals that do certain things. And then we'll send out a mailing saying, you need to use this industrial chemical, our product, because it will save you X, Y, Z, three, these three things. Well, if those three things aren't actual problems or concerns, gotcha. they're not going to buy it. So what you really need to know is who your audience is, what their problems and concerns are, and how you're going to address those products that product's going to address those concerns. I don't care if it's shampoo or what I sell, industrial chemicals, you need to know that. And if I hear you right, if you are speaking to the maintenance manager versus the, the financial guy, you're going to talk about different things. Absolutely. When, for example, right now, in tougher economic times, cities are right now experiencing a shortfall of tax revenue. Right. So their budgets are smaller. Well, we'll talk budgets at to the public works director's level. Our marketing to them is how to stretch your maintenance dollars and, and how to extend the operational life of your equipment. Real exciting stuff. But to, to the maintenance guy, he wants he's looking for fast, clean, mean. He wants it he wants something that's work, something that won't take a lot of time. Makes his life easier. Bingo. He doesn't care about the dollars nearly as much as a finance guy. Nope, not at all. You know, it's interesting when you're talking about things that make a piece effective, you really didn't get too much into the graphic side. And I know that's important, but it's not the most important part. No, not at all. Uh, one of the things we have around here, we know what we do if we don't do anything. Nothing. So trying to sit around and make something absolutely perfect, it just, it's irrelevant. you got to get it out there and you got to get it working. But as far as the, the graphic side, you try to present a, a coherent image mm -hmm. for your products and company. You try to present, uh, you know, a, a standardized message. Mm -hmm. But, you know, within that frame, I've sent some pieces out that I'm not particularly proud of <laughs> that have worked. So, you know, what can you say? 